It's time for AgriChat, the official podcast of the Tales of the Agronaut blog and stalwart gaming community, where we talk about stuff and things, and the stuff about the things, and sometimes gaming. I'm Belgast, and let's start the show. Hey folks, welcome to episode 8 of AgroChat. Uh, this week, we've got a little bit of a mix-up. We have no Ray again, um, and... If you know her, give her crap, because this will be week three. And as uh, far as I know, she should be around, but uh, she is not tonight. And in her place, we have Tam joining us again. Hi, Tam. Oh, hello. <laughs> also, we have our regular guest, uh, say hi, Kodra. Hey, how's it going? Who is joining us uh, ever valiantly when he wasn't intending to be here. Um, and on a MacBook Pro, I think. So... Uh, yeah. it, MacBook Air. MacBook Air, okay. But that's why he sounds a little different. Um, also, we have Ash, as always. Hello. Um, what have you guys been playing? Uh, Tam, since you're the guest, what have you been up to lately? Uh, what have I been up to? Um, I've been playing a whole bunch of Transistor. I've been trying and failing to play Watch Dogs. Um, I played a bit of State of Decay, and I was in a minis tournament all day today. Cool. It sounded like you had a good outcome there. Yeah, uh, it was it was really fun actually, and cool. took it home. So I'm okay. Now was this Infinity or was this a War Machine? Uh, Infinity. Cool. Um, it was a good time. Kodra, what have you been up to? What have you been playing? So the only video games I've played at all this week was the League of Legends uh, Thin Night Newbie Night, which was a lot of fun. And uh, any. Anyone in the Alliance of Awesome community should definitely show up because we're going to be having those weekly. It sounds like now, yeah, yeah we're totally going to do them Thursday nights. I think the um, either do it the the nine o'clock time frame that we did, or maybe a little bit earlier. But uh, maybe we'll split the difference and do like uh, eight thirty. It was a ton. Yeah, of fun. but beyond video, it was beyond video games. I also uh, got together with a board game group twice this past week once uh on memorial day for an all-day gaming thing and i played uh i played uh love letter del moody and kept it all off with a galaxy trucker which is always fun and i also played this week a game which was really interesting it's uh it's a live style game where you're exploring and interacting with each other and and it's for a first time game. It was like about four and a half hours and it was midnight and we were like, yeah, we're about off. So let's just call it. Very cool. I know at one point you wanted to talk about galaxy truckers, but, uh, I I've never played the game. Galaxy trucker is a really, really cool game and I'm sure we'll bring it up at some point. Yeah. Okay. Ash, what have you been up to? Uh, I feel like, I feel like I've been bouncing around between lots of different things this week. I got roped into playing Ib and Ob, which is a, Deceptively difficult co-op platformer. Oh right, I played that as well with that Ashtar. Was, and that was really freaking entertaining. Game. Listening to you guys play it, like I don't remember what I was doing that night, but it was funny. Uh, that game looks so adorable. It looks so and simple and adorable. And it's like the kind of game that I was like, "Hey, let's. It'll be a nice like. Let's hang out and play and chat and you know maybe this is a game for like twelve year olds, but it's fine." And no, no, it it's broke not our brains. <laughs> Bell, it sounds like me and you are going to have to play this one. I, I know, yeah. So that we can you have should. an experience. Oh my god. It's totally worth it. It, yeah. it just like, came it out on It took you, what, 45 minutes for one of those maps, I think? It took us it, 40... It, it, it took us a while. There was at least one... We only got to, like, the fifth level. Where we just sat there and stared at it for, like, half an hour. That's funny. Um, anything else? Bit of League of Legends, bit of ESO... Now that Wildstar is out, a bit of Wildstar. I actually got a Wii U to play Mario Kart, so a bit of that too. Man, How about uh, them blue shells? I, I'm not sure if I'm that Let's devoted to Let's not talk Kart. about blue shells. I, I I love Mario Kart. It was what ultimately got me to buy a Wii, but... Uh, Let me just yeah. say that the XKCD comic is correct on, you know, the topic of profanity. Oh, it totally is. Like, I, I feel like Mario Kart and Super Smash Brothers are what sells Nintendo consoles, but uh, I don't know. Like I, 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 I kind of want a Wii U, but I kind of also don't want a, a thing that like I, I have a Wii and <laughs> it collected dust. Du- it collected dust, so I gave it to my mother in law um, when she had 
when she was having basically physical therapy after she broke her shoulder, um, and she thought maybe like wee bowling would be good physical therapy for the uh, the, the hand she had lost feeling in, and it's now collecting dust at her place. So yeah, I I just I don't know. I I don't want uh, another one game console for me. Uh-huh. I have I have my rule for consoles. <laughs> five games. Five games before you want five, it. Five. There's, it's got to be five games that I bad that I want to play that I can't play on something I already own. That is actually a really damned good rule. And at least three of them have to be. At least three of them have to be out, and the other two have to have release dates. So the funny thing is, is that's probably about where I was with my uh, 3DS purchase. There was that many games that I wanted to play, uh, if not more. I also had no DS, so, I mean, there's a whole DS library that I never got to play. But that that sounds reasonable. The, I just don't think we're there yet on the Wii U. The Wii U is getting closer. I kind of am, because I, I like the Mario games. I want to play Pik- Pikmin. And I missed Wind Waker when it came out the first time. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah, I played Wind Waker on See, the I, GameCube. Yeah, I like Pikmin. Um, I don't... I don't live close enough to enough people to want to play Mario Kart. <laughs> um, I don't that's really... What... I don't love Smash Brothers the way a lot of people do. That's unfortunate. I feel like Smash Please. Brothers is one of those things that you had to grow up during a certain window to be really into it. I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm completely wrong with that. But, like, I missed it. My Smash Brothers was called Power Stone. I... Oh, I remember Power Stone. Power Stone was delightful. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm too games. young for Power Stone. <laughs> it's a similar kind of game. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough, and it was the game that I was into. Uh, actually, Power Stone 2 was amazing, but... No, my, my fighting game is Marvel vs. Capcom. That's what so, got me into fighting games. So, Smash Brothers was the first fighting game that made me feel like I wasn't incompetent at fighting games. So, and in many ways, I trying to go back back to other fighting games just frustrates me like i like the use of i like the ease of use of smash brothers <laughs> yeah i don't know like i've played a little bit of, of it but it's the kind of thing that i want to play with a bunch of other people that i know but not really by myself um like i will that probably pick it up use my for 3ds i will probably pick it up for 3ds because i know Pretty one, much everyone that's on this podcast right now will end up picking it up. Um, Maybe picking, picking what up? 3ds or the the Super Smash Brothers for 3ds. Mm. I might might just wait for the Wii U one, but I don't know. It looks like it, it might be entertaining because I'm far more likely to play my 3ds than get a Wii U. Smash Brothers is a game that that I would probably buy, but I am not. Uh, it's not going to sell a console for me. Okay. I guess it's my turn. I have been all over the friggin' place. I posted a big blog post this week lamenting how many games I wanted to play. Um, most... I feel like I'm not really giving much playtime to any game at the moment. Um, we tried to do the dungeon night on Wednesday, and it didn't quite make, but uh, Thursday we had the legal night, and it was really fun. And I think it will probably spread to more people. Because um, I know there were a bunch of people that said they wanted to attend, but couldn't attend that week for whatever reason. Uh, still working my way through the veteran content in Elder Scrolls. Um, I am, I don't know, just a few quests into Auradon. Uh Then today, I got home late from this crazy wedding. And... Finally got into Wildstar and created my uh, Chua Engineer and an Exile that I will probably never play. And uh, other than that, I feel like I just haven't had a lot of time to play much of anything, or at least play much of anything seriously. Like, I, I can't remember the last time I uh, streamed anything on Twitch. Um, I also know that I have to do Final Fantasy V, as Ash keeps reminding me. And I did play a little bit of that earlier. So that's pretty much my uh, week. Um bunch of stuff happened this week, and I'm not really remembering what, but I know <laughs> the biggest thing is that today the Wildstar head start began. Um, we are, we are I, so good at this. We are so good at counting. I know. I know. Uh, yeah, so I think most of us are playing it. I don't know. Are, are you playing it, Kodra? Uh I'm not playing it currently. Well, I, I haven't picked it up 
I'll wait in your guys' impressions on it. <laughs> Ever since I landed on playing the Chua Engineer, I've really enjoyed it. And especially now that I have found the add-on Steer. Yeah, Steer, um, Steer makes the game for me. Well, Deadlock was okay. I mean, it was it was it made it better, but Steer operates so cleanly. Um, and for those listening, the my main problem with Wildstar uh, from day one has been that I felt it should be an action combat game. Um, it did not make sense for it to have both ranged based cone type attacks and have a WoW like driving scheme where you move with WASD and just the traditional limited mouse look. Because uh, it, it, it gets really spastic when you're trying to move out of stuff on the screen and cast your abilities and make sure you're pointing your cone in the right direction. It just felt like permanent mouse look made a lot of sense. And uh, Deadlock was an earlier add-on that allowed you to toggle back and forth between the two, but it seemed like I was always in the wrong mode. Um, so I was constantly interacting with Quest Giver and then backing back out and turning off Deadlock and then interacting with him again. Um, Whereas Steer uh, does a really clean system where anytime you're moving, it's in mouse look. And anytime you're holding still, it's no longer in mouse look, which makes it just about ideal for questing, etc. You can also uh, turn it on, like to- make it a toggle, um, which I've, I've been playing with. Yeah, and I'm probably going to set a toggle so that I can turn it off uh, if... My party is in combat, but I am trying to turn something in. <laughs> yeah, because I ran into that earlier today. Um, but yeah, it definitely makes the game, you know, a hundred percent better for me to have it from a mouse look. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts so far? Um, I know Ash, you've played a hell of a lot more than I have. Uh, yeah, that add-on is absolutely required for me. I can't at this point. I can't even imagine playing the game without it, which is weird because. The original Deadlock was developed by one of the game's actual UI designers, but I guess he didn't have time to actually make it part of the game. So it feels, Mon it feels like it should be part of the game. I mean, it it definitely feels like it it, it should have just been something you could toggle on and off. But uh, I agree, and I guess so did he. But he didn't have time time to do anything about it. Yeah. Uh, game in general. What are your thoughts? Uh, it's okay. I guess it's. I keep hearing it gets better at later levels, but I still haven't gotten to the levels where I guess it gets better. It right seems now, just kind of simple, like from like 1 to 10-ish. Right now to me it feels like kind of a better take on WoW, maybe? Like, it. I, I hate the constantly comparing it to WoW, but to me it's a very WoW game. You kind of can't help it with yeah, the art style they went for and the, yeah. It's it's like WoW done a little bit better. Um, in some cases. In some cases. I, I'm just hoping that they also take other cues from WoW and you wrote a lengthy blog post about this to where... As, Not make their classes completely screwy? Yeah, exactly. Like, as, as, as many problems as, you know, we've had with WoW and other people have had with WoW, they have done a pretty good job of balancing the classes to where no one was useless. And, Unless you play a rogue, I guess. Well, rogues still do insane damage. They're just very pigeonholed. Yeah, like, especially late expansion, rogues do almost better damage than anyone else can possibly do. And that's been true for almost every expansion. They're just weak uh, early expansion. Um, but I don't know. It, I, I, I'm i still kind of up in the air about whether or not I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm trying to give it a full try. Uh, mostly because, like I said uh, this week, I did not expect to like Final Fantasy fourteen. I totally did not expect to want to play that. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed my time playing it. So I'm hoping Wildstar is going to be another case of that. Like, I really want to give it a try because I want to like Wildstar. There are things about it that I find very appealing. Also, that you are awesome. Which, that is, discovering that improved my enjoyment of the game dramatically. That that was kind of my takeaway was that you are so cute and so awesome and so hilarious. It's, it's the two animations that make the game for me. Like, the... The land roll thing that they do after a double jump is just amazing, and it makes me want to do it all the time. And the Their fact that the game awesome. has double jump. that <laughs> That's like every game can be made better with double jump. That's my take. 
I don't know. But, I feel some games you need to earn your double jump, like Metroidvanias. Oh, speaking of Metroidvanias, I finally got around to playing the Saturn version of my favorite game ever, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And man, play, being able to play as Maria is really a joke. And I did not realize that was the case. Because uh, apparently they give Maria, when you start, every single collectible item, which means she can do everything from the beginning and none of the... none of the There's no progression? Yeah, yeah. none of the progression even makes sense. So it was really mm-hmm. weird. Uh, yeah, because like, I, I was just running around. I'm like, oh, so she already has double jump. Okay, well, maybe they did that because of some other reason. And I happened down a hallway, and they had one of those blue locked doors that you don't get to open until much later in the game. And boom, she can open it. Okay. Well, yeah, apparently she has everything. Um, so, yeah, and that was unfortunate, because I was kind of looking forward to playing Symphony of the Night from a completely different character perspective, but instead they kind of made it a joke. Hmm. That's sort of a pain. So... Last week, we talked about Transistor from a gameplay standpoint. This week, we have all beat it. In fact, I think I was the only one in the last show who had not beat the game. Um, From this point on, I am going to post big spoilers when I, I upload this that we are going to talk about the game's story. Um... And that's going to entail lots of spoiling the surprise. So if you are planning on playing Transistor, please skip ahead. Um, Or or even stop listening to the rest of this uh, podcast until you've beaten it. Uh, Because it is really worth not spoiling the ending. That said... OMG, that ending. OMG, that ending. Man, that ending. That was was a sucker punch. The... uh... I I may be in the minority here in that the ending I saw coming. It is all of the moments leading up to it that was the, that were the sucker punch. I I did see where the ending was going after you finished the fight with Royce. Like I had figured that was that's where it was going, but oh man. Up to that point I was not expecting stuff that happened. No, I I can tell you the moment I realized it. No, I, I, prob- I probably realized it later than you then. <laughs> oh, I, I totally... What, I mean, was like, the I moment, did not see it coming. The moment what I realized the it? the moment you realized it, yeah. You locked yourself out. How are you gonna... Oh. That that line, I was like, why w- Oh. Wait, what line? When you leave her... When you leave Red's apartment, the transistor says, you locked yourself out. How are you gonna... Oh. Uh, interesting. And... I and wish, you I establish... don't think I went. The what? I don't think I actually went to her apartment. Oh, you totally did. Oh, you did I? Go she was, and... she was... skip it. It's she possible was... to skip oh. it. She was eating pizza. Like, yeah. Nope, I missed that part. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like, I, I the, heard that. The game line. does not tell you things that you skip. I, yeah. I heard that line, but that was just shortly after uh, the transistor went on his whole little kind of sort of freaking out, kind of sort of drug-induced sound phase. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I just assumed it was more of that dialogue that I didn't think anything of of it. Like, okay. No, he was was lucid, and and you establish so early that Red is her own person and is not just blindly listening to the transistor. Yeah. Hi. you, You turned left. Yeah. 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 That's one of the very first things you do. Well, the thing is, is there is definite intent there. Like, there is no, this is something that accidentally happened. She was on a warpath to revenge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, and, 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 and she knew that not, she was, she, she wasn't coming out of there happily. I, so, I totally Or I guess maybe she did, that actually. That entire apartment scene. That, well, that one her. line haunts me. Yeah. Man, the voice acting for Royce. Oh, it's, that haunts me. Just the like cold, detached. Well, that's that's the way things are. I think that the uh, I think that his accent is a masterstroke. It is it is the perfect addition to 
to hit the rest of his dialogue because it's ever so slightly jarring. Yeah, it's it's unnatural sounding at all times, and that just makes it all the weirder to listen to. And the very that very faint twang. Yeah, is like oh. combined with the electronic sort of delivery. Yeah, he. So to me, it always was the sound of a man. The man was saying stuff in a way of, of like inevitability. There yep. was nothing he could do about what he. There was nothing he could do. He He's absolutely like, broken. He sounded like a man completely unhinged at that point. Like it's, I, I totally expected to find him and to have hands coated in blood, just sitting there like it's no big deal. So maybe this. We'll is... note that in turn, it keeps track of how many times you attack that monitor. <laughs> maybe maybe this is terrible. Um, I was as you as you know, but listeners probably don't. I was not. I did not have a great couple of weeks um especially the week i was playing transistor um yeah, by the you way, picked the wrong game to play that week it's true don't um don't play that game after a breakup it's not great for your mental state but oh man did i identify with royce like oh yeah he's totally just accepted that he's totally accepted everything yeah wow i was like i was like man dude i feel you bro <laughs> You know those feels. It is. Oh. It is possibly, possibly. It says something about uh, my my emotional state that I did not, in fact, think the ending was sad. The I, ending was really, really weird. I thought that the ending was the only way it could possibly have ended happily. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, so, so there's the whole so question. That's kind of the way it is, but even so. There's the whole so, question, though, is like, is this even real? Are you playing a real game? Uh, like, uh, no, I mean, like, is is the world that they're in real, or is it just one giant computer program? Well. Are they themselves programs? I well, assume, does it they yeah. exist as better? So uh, this I, is reboot the game. Yeah, I mean, well, like. It's it's never a hundred percent sure. Like, I mean, did they get transformed into programs by the process, or were they always programs in the first place? They they have processes attached to them. That, that's the thing. Like, they have those. And I wish I had the game in front of me right now. But they have like they get chipped in, uh, and you can read about it in the profiles of all of the functions. They all get these various functions added to them, and the reason why they add the functions are part of the b- profiles. You can see the profiles for the for red, and you can see the profile for the transistor. No, you can't. Well, the pro- profile for the transistor is hilarious because it's so uninformative. Once again, because- they troll you with the narrator's identity. Completely. <laughs> they, they totally do, just like with Russ. Uh, like, you get absolutely no information about the narrator. Yeah, but I guess I mean, like, okay, are they augmented humans, or are they themselves just programs? The process? Or the characters? No, the characters, characters. that you're interacting with. I got the impression they were augmented humans. I, and, I and think that the I think that the game is a, is a uh, very well-hidden transhumanist. That's yeah. the thing, it's like, I don't think... Manifesto. They're, I don't think they're human at all. Like, I think that this is a view inside a system in decay, and... Cloud Bank is the inside of a giant computer? Essentially, yeah. I mean, this is a whole Tron-like world to me, is what it felt like. So, in the ending, it's just the beginning after reformatting of a system. I don't know that I got that. I mean, it's... There's like... a lot... I, I don't think that... That's... Maybe that's one of the beautiful things about it is there's no real clear answer there. So, so what the I storytelling in this game that... leaves an awful lot of things open to interpretation. But what... if you think about it, some of the best stories do. I right? like they don't necessarily give you all the details and let you kind of fill in the blanks on your own. Uh, so I I am not a huge fan of that just because it reduces the weight of the sucker punch that was the ending and the transistors. For function 
was essentially to like you it could retain the digital existence there, there there's clearly some part of the human characters in this game that was transcribed on these digitalized functions that the transistor could uh consume and then query and in the end red was like i would rather exist inside sister with you and live outside here on my own well but from that standpoint what if the transistor is just the equivalent of an sd card and they got copied over to a different system yeah and that's 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 the thing like so if that was the case why is that why is the transistor so adamant that she doesn't do it because uh because red's a lot better adjusted than the transistor the 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 most the most well adjusted character in that game is red and and the transistor doesn't realize it he's he's still stuck thinking about uh you know the world he knew and has some difficulty accepting you know the validity of the other one i think it, there's definitely yeah there's definitely this weird existence where he exists between worlds. He feel less real as a result of it. It's interesting, man. So your thought would be that it doesn't matter what form of existence she takes. So long, like, as long as her consciousness is still there, she's still there. And she is choosing this new form of consciousness. Yeah, she's which, just wholly embracing it. Yeah, because it's, setting well, out, it, she knew something. She knew it wouldn't end well, or nothing would be the same. I mean, she, everything already changed for her. She had her voice taken. She had, you know, theoretically, we don't know a lot about, you know, the 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 man inside the transistor. But you get the impression that they were lovers. So her entire world changed that night. I I think the most power. I I, I really love the ending. Like it, it, through this lens, because uh, ultimately she gets her voice back, and that's she does. That's you kind of get you kind of get the hint that that's really what she wanted. Like the I like it because the transistor is an unreliable narrator, and Red is absolutely reliable because she knows what's going on, she knows what she's doing, and she knows how the story ends. She just has to handle some stuff. Yeah, it's interesting to see like comparing and contrasting rocks to the transistor. Oh yeah. Like Rux is omniscient. He knows pretty much everything about what's going on in the story. He's telling it really past tense. Yeah. The transistor is in the story. It really doesn't know everything. Well, it's totally fallible and it seems to be the only like red doesn't really get affected by anything, but the transistor totally can get corrupted <laughs> and does during the storyline. I mean, we yeah, well, almost lose him. The transistor is really uh really insecure. Yeah, like he has a lot of trouble letting go. Yeah, those scenes are actually, uh, I found them a little uncomfortable when he's talking like he's all drugged up run around the spine. Yeah. What ha- happened to the second spine, by the way? I Was that a piece of the game I missed? Like the second time he becomes uh, unstable around the spine, like that's the last time you see the spine and it never comes up. You never have to fight it again. Is is that? Yeah, I don't recall fighting piece. the spine a second time. You don't. At least I didn't. No, so, don't. so perhaps that is just an indicator that the world is forever damaged for the transistor. Like, just because you kill one the spine, more are going to come. You can't really deal with it. I don't know. See, and okay, back to the whole SD card metaphor. I I think what the deal is is the transistor is basically a memory device and the only reason why they get trapped inside the transistor is because just if like if you have a corrupted hard drive you can sometimes pull files back off the hard drive to write it to something else but you can't ever reliably write stuff back to the hard drive see i the more i think about it and the more i'm with Tam on this being kind of a very subtle transhumanist manifesto. This is actually the real meat space that we know. It's just evolved, 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 where there is sort of analogous, there, there are digital uh, components to the physical bodies. 
the transistor is a way to convert those physical bodies into a purely digital form. And the transist the, the man inside the transistor is just having nothing but problems dealing with that concept. By the end of it, Red is willing to accept that in that existence with open arms. She does so. And in that light, it's a lot more like it's very interesting. So this is this is the conversation I sort of primed this night with because it's kind of been eating at me was story of transistor a sexist story. I would like to explain the reasoning I was thinking this, and then you can tell me why I'm wrong because I'm pretty sure I am. So the story of transistor is about a woman who for some reason loses her ability to speak. She loses her ability to communicate with the world and is a silent protagonist and is accompanied by a male companion, the Transistor, uh, who is her ally in doing battle to these people who have wronged her. And ultimately, at the story, she chooses suicide uh, so that she could exist with her lover again. And on the face of things, that was really disturbing to me. Uh, I think that it misses the... I think that that misses the detail that that Red is priming... Red is a step ahead of the Camarada and the Transistor in that the part of the reason that she's important is that she's already singing subversive things about the state of reality she's she's already a step ahead of like i say even the camarada because the camarada are basically their goal is fast tracking the city into a transhumanist state with the process controlled by them but red's already there it's everybody else catching up to her um no i think that the i i think that the the sexist problem is actually uh civil i i don't oh. actually think you're wrong uh but i i don't think you're wrong but but you're but you're not right for the reasons you think okay the the uh the sexism isn't with red who is who is a, a subtly but very thoroughly fleshed out character who continually subverts a lot of a lot of things and spends most of the the story doing her own thing even even in the face of you know her allies telling her not to yeah but and and being right about it um the the real problem i think is with sybil who is not fleshed out at all other than as a jealous rival is a super one-dimensional character well all she does is fail she's a she is a character she is a she is a very stereotypical character who does nothing but fail, and and that rubs me the wrong way. Um, I, Although I feel like most of the camarada do nothing but fail, with the exception they, of they, Royce. They don't though. Um, no. Like Grant is highly successful until the very end, um, and uh, the other guy whose name I can't Grant. remember. Asher. Asher. Oh. Um, Asher. Asher is Asher is the one who kills himself out of his love for somebody else. Yeah. Asher is Asher is very clearly deeply in love with Grant. Whether or not that's requited is the game leaves up to your imagination. But he's he's so attached to him that he kills himself for him to no real end. Yeah. Whereas yeah. whereas I don't think. I don't think that from Red, I don't, from Red's perspective, I don't think that she kills. I don't think that that she thinks she kills herself. Again, I, I don't think that that's what that's where she's. I don't think that that's where her mind is. It's it's in fact abundantly clear um, in in both the ending and the lead up to it that she knows exactly what she's doing and it's not killing herself. Yes, and and the, she's accomplishing her goal like, from moment one. It, well, maybe not moment one. It but. is the it is the image of her stabbing herself through the chest with the transistor that is very visceral even though she does know exactly what she's doing like it, it 
again, it's hard because you're you have this transistor who is such an unreliable narrator, yeah. telling you that what she is doing is killing. Well, he yeah. just doesn't get it yet. I mean, yeah. to me, she's basically putting a key in a lock and opening the door. Yep, she's her. It, she is. That's that's why I think it's a very subtle transhumanist manifesto because it's an incredibly gut wrenchingly sad and and I agree sexist ending if you don't realize what Red is doing or if you don't see things from Red's perspective. Yeah, and and it the game goes to some to some pains to point out that Red Red is notable because she doesn't think like everyone else in the city. She's. She's a step ahead. I mean, they even say that like her her concerts cause people to break out into riots because they can't handle it. Yeah, and yeah, it's definitely oh man, such an interesting story. But oh, the ending. Uh, I love the ending. Uh, the the fact that they end on her saying like, "Was it high?" Hey, yeah, just hey. her voice. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 clean. It's like really simple it's a great place to end up and it makes you wonder what happens now and you can't find out and you just have to imagine i'm gonna have to go back and listen to all of what i perceived as sad songs because like man like the the whole lingo of going to the country oh yeah no i honestly like so um because i've been depressive lately i've listened to the soundtrack a lot particularly the vocal tracks. Um, I'm, I'm less and I mean, and, and I admit my, I'm a little biased presently, but I didn't really I think find the, the song sad. I think the only, the only song that I, I find sad is signals. All of the other ones. You don't think in signals. circles is sad. No, I think, I think in circles is a gentle reminder. I, I, I think it's almost triumphant. But it's but it's a gentle reminder. I mean, say what you like about minor key about songs in minor keys, but which I actually don't even know if it's in a minor key. Likely is. Not sure though. Um, but because it's about uh, it's about um, taking care of yourself from the perspective of somebody who is telling you to do so. Then there's the flip side of that though is it sounds like you're in trouble and you can't take care of yourself. Yeah. Sounds like everything is not all right in the world. Very rarely. Is and this person right. is not helping. Well, she does what she can. She won't save you. Well, alternatively, maybe she doesn't think you need to be saved. Maybe she knows what's going to happen to you and thinks that's the right path. I don't I don't know that saving somebody is necessarily always the right choice. Well, and another element that I thought was weird was just the relationship between the transistor and red. Because at times it's almost brotherly. It's a yeah. very, I mean, it's it, it's this whole, he's trying to protect Red from the world vibe, but not doing a very successful job of it. And he knows that she's more than capable of taking care of herself. Like, there's not even a question, like, there's not even a question in his mind that she's capable of handling herself. Well, and there's also, there's also like this subtle undertone that, that it feels like, He's trying to be needed. Yeah. It, it, he isn't really that needed at the end of the day, but he still wants to be needed. Yeah, I mean, I. it's really interesting to me that the, the Transistor's... Um, the most uncertain the Transistor's dialogue gets is, hey, please don't leave me. Oh, yeah. Like, he... he he seems to feel like he needs her far more than she needs him. And I... Yeah, I kind of agree. And she's not... He's not really wrong. Well, and, and that's the thing. is like, to some extent, it flips the traditional gender narrative 180 to where you have Red, who is the confident, strong person in this relationship, and the Transistor very much not at all. Yeah. Man, that battle with Royce is so satisfying. Oh, yeah. Like, like every time I got to kill him, it made me happier. <laughs> that, that was a very, like, very thoughtful, turn-based game. Very visceral. 
the thing I liked the most about it was the fact that it it followed the same rules you had. He's got a transistor, he's got abilities, and you got to knock him out just like he'd have to knock you out. Except I, it actually goes the other way around. He gets more abilities as the fight goes on. That's true. Right. Yeah, he he changes abilities as the fight goes on. But I, I guess he has one more than you can have. I think he's got five, and you can have four. I don't know. He didn't get a chance to demonstrate very many abilities when I was fighting. Him. Yeah. Oh, I just went to town on him, and and I was constantly breaking abilities. My uh, my agency fights were a lot harder than Royce. Because I still have not gone through the second round of the game, I have not done any of those yet. The uh, yeah, I've as been as as I think I've mentioned uh, a few days ago, I, I've wrung every bit of juice out of that game. The uh, the I completed everything in the beach. Uh, and all of the achievements, including do five uh, do five battles with all of the limiters on. Wow! By the way, that's really hard, so, especially yeah. if you think if you if you decide to do if you decide if you decide to be a clever asshole and uh, <laughs> and do the first five fights in the, the first five fights you possibly can in the game. Yes. Guess what? Fight number three is Sybil. Oops. Sybil would be rough with limiters. Sybil is really hard with 10 limiters on. Well, honestly, yeah. at the point at which you fight Sybil, it is a really freaking hard fight. Yeah. She's yeah, the first time? Have, yeah, absolutely. You don't She's have the a first lot time. To, to, to use. She's not that hard the second time, but oh god, that third time. <laughs> I'm just glad I didn't have to deal with the, uh, the spine. I think the spine would have been worse. The, the spine was a rough fight. The spine is bad. The spine was, the spine was rough both of my playthroughs. I did okay at the spine the first time through, but it was when I was experimenting with the, how help worked. Turns out it can take a lot of shots for you. I like help. So, I'm... I like my digi puppy. <laughs> I'm in a weird place with this game right now, because I almost entirely played the game for the story. And once the story was over, and knowing that it's not really going to change going forward, and I'm pretty sure I talked to everything I could talk to, I don't have much desire to play through it again. For me, it was the, uh, it was seeing the, seeing the game again in the, uh, what's this called? Now that you know. Um, yeah, seeing the game again from the perspective of, I've now, I now know how the story ends. It's one of the reasons why I, I don't actually think that it's necessarily a sad game. Okay, so from that perspective, I will probably play through it at least one more time because I would like to to look for the foreshadowing as well. Uh, I, I am in a similar state as Bell. Like I played through the ending of that game, and it was such a sucker punch that I just had to put it down and walk away. Like, right. yeah, like I I posted on Twitter that Transistor got me right in the feels, and I think I'm bleeding. And that was pretty true for the day. Like that was that was intense. Oh yeah, no. I... And I had to go play Wolfenstein and blow away cartoon Nazis. See, while you guys did that, I maybe maybe it was not the healthiest choice, but I went <laughs> right back into it. <laughs> yeah, like I I got far enough to get to the first save point and then exited the hell out of it because like I, that was too much, too intense for me at that time. I went and played Antichamber and beat that, which turned me from depressed to angry, to very confused, confused. Oh. Antichamber is a, another weird game. Yeah, I'll we talked you, about I'm it. You enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. I, I still, I, I agree that you and Bell should play Ibn Ab, By the way, <laughs> we we should yeah. totally do that. Like, I know I have it on PS3, but I can totally pick it up on Steam. I'm sure you should totally, you should totally nab it on. Uh, Totally nab it on Steam. I on Transistor though. Do you want to say my favorite times were like, and I didn't like at first. I didn't realize what was going on, and then I realized what she was doing. Would go to a terminal, and like there would be a story, and you would leave a comment, and your comments completely unrelated to the story were just, "Here's a here's a place where I can start typing. I need to tell the Transistor some stuff. I need oh yeah." Yeah. Like, those were great. Yeah, that, once I once he's I caught on to that, I thought that was amazing. I, I, he needs to be reassured that I know I've got my things handled. Oh, those were those were rough. 
I for me the for me the roughest moments were the transistor realizing something. Every the, time he realized what was going on, yeah, that red, red obviously clearly already, already knew. knew. Yeah, and the problem is, is every time that happens, you can hear in his voice that he is realizing just how unneeded in this equation he really is. Yeah, and yeah, and and how how far behind he is on catching on. It's kind of a weird dichotomy, though, because while he isn't really needed, the transistor, the object, kind of is. Yeah, which which is really, I think that's what I think that what's ma- what makes it so poignant is because he clearly realizes that as well. Like he's useful. And he's a tool because he's a tool. Yeah. 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 Which again, to some extent, kind of flips the gender narrative on its head because, in some aspects. Because he is only needed for that one thing, it kind of objectifies the transistor. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. The, the, the game has a lot of nuance. I, I, I also thought it was so... Like, uh, some of the times when the transistor was even behind the player, like I felt like no player would have been surprised at walking in to see Grant and Asher dead. Transistor was. Like, yeah. he was a little bit slow on the pick. But it was intentional, I believe. Well, and the thing is, is okay. So back to the the transhumanist side of things, is he really slow on the pickup, or is it just an incomplete copy? Uh, I I get the impression that that's actually his. That that is in fact his personality. Yeah. yeah. Like just because just because you go into the computer doesn't mean you your personality alters or shifts. Like, it's still you, you're just taking on a different form. That's sort of the philosophy of transhumanism. Yeah, but during the the tale, you're obviously seeing that he can be affected by, you know, the fact that he is now a computer. Yeah. So, I don't know, like, that's an unanswered question for me. Well, it's his personality dealing with the fact that he is now, he is now existing inside form. Yeah. He He is very much a flawed character. And that's probably what drives the the nuance of the story ahead so well, is that he has very obvious flaws. Whereas Red, to some extent, other than the fact that she's missing a voice, seems kind of superhuman at points. Well, and there's a, a fine tradition of voiceless superhuman characters. They're just typically not female. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, I, I don't know, I, you can say she's a silent protagonist, but for a silent protagonist, she sure as hell talks a lot. I mean, like, she says a lot of things, just she is a very not with dis- a voice. I don't think that she's a silent protagonist, because that suggests a protag Like, this, the classic silent protagonist, you're pre- projecting your pers- the player's personality on. And Red has her own very distinct personality. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, normally I'm one of these people that I don't like playing female characters. I never do. But this was okay to me because it wasn't a vessel for me. I was playing this character that it's its own thing. I just happened to be pushing the buttons and controlling it, but all of the interaction was out of my control. It was I was watching it unfold before me. It wasn't me, if that makes sense at all. Like that that somehow makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah, she's she's not a she's not a player avatar. She's a character unto herself. Well, at this point, we have run an hour, most of it talking about Transistor. Um, and I think probably if we allowed ourselves, we could at least we could go, go on another... quite a while longer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I think I think for the most part, we, we said the bulk of what needed to be said or what we wanted to say. Um, any closing thoughts about Transistor before we tie off the knot? Play it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. What he said. Yeah, it's, I mean, you shouldn't, you if, shouldn't actually hear me say this if you haven't played it. So. This point, but if you are, play it because Seriously. even now that you know, it's still well worth the playthrough. the 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 dialogue, the writing is amazing. The music, the music, the, the art design. The it's it's a visually amazing game. The the vo- the voice acting. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I think that the quote-unquote set design is just phenomenal as well, and the the differences between the process and the very you know French noir design before the fall of Cloud Bank, um, it's it's a beautiful game. Anyway, uh, 
that's probably all we have time for tonight. Um, thanks for listening, and uh, let's run down through the how to reach people. Ash, where can we find you? I'm at hidden underscore wings on Twitter, and I'm also at uh, the blog at ashfang.com. Kodra? I am at Kodra22 on Twitter, and uh, I believe I'm at Kodra22 on a nook, or at Kodra. One of those two. Uh, Tales of the Agronaut blog, at Belgast on Twitter, uh, Belgast on Twitch, um, also Belgast on a nook. Um, Tam, I know you really don't give out public information, so... Yeah, I don't. That's for cool. For reasons. Um, but anyway, thanks for joining us, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed listening. Good night. 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 Good night.